to start off, I think a lot of you must have heard about this big hue and cry about a certain Nilofer. Oops, not this one. I'm talking about this one. You might have seen this image too in some newspapers online. So this is an image of the storm uh, through a Earth imaging satellite. You can notice its compact structure, the spiral shape, and a big arm like an octopus going towards Pakistan, which is to the west of this, uh, to the east of this image, and you can't see it here. Going forward, if you go one day forward, you will see that it's uh, changing its shape. So the more compact spiral uh, cyclone like Nilofar is, the more power it packs. Going forward, you will see that it's starting to now disintegrate or change its shape uh, in, in, in a larger way. And going to the last date in this sequence, uh, the 30th of October, you can see now that it's now a random feature. So this is the whole story where we had this big hue and cry that a cyclone is coming, get ready. And then after a few days, we were told to relax. So by using our observation technologies, we can construct a time sequence, as you can see here. This allows us to study and analyze cyclones and such natural disasters. It can help us predict their motion path. It can help us predict their development in the future and can also help us plan resilience against them. I want to switch to land now. Uh, we're going to the southeastern part of Punjab to the third desert bordering India. I want to point out this river you can see flowing in uh, from India into this region. It is marked by the greenness around the river, but you can see suddenly at one point in the desert, it stops. Well, many centuries ago, the river did used to flow through this point. And the river has stopped, but the river channel or the path the river used to follow, we now call it a paleo channel, a dry old river channel, is still there, buried under a lot of sand. The question is, can we find out that channel, that hidden channel, using Earth observation. Well, if we take satellite images from two different kind of satellites, on the left, the colorful image you see is from a satellite that's sensing in the visible and infrared wavelengths, and on the right, it's some microwave radar image. And after doing some data processing and employing some complex image processing techniques, we can actually combine and fuse these two images, come out with a result by which we can start actually penetrating the sand. And if we overlay it over the simple Google Earth view and add a bit of transparency, I think now you can begin to see some dark spots right after the river, which match very close in tone to the actual river. So although these are very preliminary, preliminary results, which I'm working with, uh, working with a student on this, we are very excited to see this, and we hope to scientifically verify this in the coming months uh, by doing ground surveys. Want to go back to the ocean again. So now you can see how much I love studying the Earth. I go towards land, I go towards ocean. Want to introduce you towards uh, something interesting. These are called ocean eddies. So the name sounds like a person, but let me assure you it's the name of a phenomena in physics. So it's basically a swirling kind of motion circular motion that happens in fluid motion. In oceans, these eddies can exist from maybe a few hours to many months, and they can range in size from a few kilometers to hundreds of kilometers. The one you're seeing here is a very short scale eddy. They normally persist from 12 hours to 24 hours, and uh, they could range from 10, 10 kilometers to 15 kilometers in size. So if you look at the top two images, they are separated by 30 minutes. They are images from distant satellites which follow each other in the same orbit with a time lag of 30 minutes. So by looking at those two images, maybe you can't see any motion because it's hard to study ocean features like that because they are in constant motion. But if you look at the animation on the left bottom corner, you will see a certain circular motion. And let me point that out to you more clearly by marking this uh, circle on them. Okay, now it's here. So now I think now you can see a clear clockwise motion. So what I can do, I can make algorithms to automa automatically determine these ocean currents from these uh, images. You can see this on the motion, but of course, how many images are you going to analyze? So I can make these kind of algorithms to automatically extract information out of these images. This work you're seeing uh, was done over the 
U.S. California coast ocean, but I am looking and I'm uh, working these days to implement this work on the uh, Arabian Sea where these features exist also. What else can we do with satellite images? Well, with the recent contemporary uh, very high resolution images, we can do a lot of amazing things. And I think within the last few years with the advent of Google Earth and other mapping applications, uh, I think most of us know much more about uh, what we can do with high resolution satellites as compared to maybe two decades ago. But let me tell you what we can do as our scientists to actually influence both policy and science applications and even uh, management of natural resources. If, we, if I can have a satellite image of a Kalam forest, as you can see here, then I can find out the regions where deforestation is happening. I can inform the government or the relevant agencies that they, can, they should introduce mitigation mares there. If I go to an urban area, well, I can count the number of cars in a region, or I can even measure their size. What you can notice here is that the cars as expected are smaller in size from this truck-like vehicle. So you can think of infinite possibilities in your head, what can be done with this data. One thing you can immediately think of, okay, you can identify a vehicle just by its length, and that's just the start. There are so many applications, there are so many different methods to derive information out of uh, Earth images, and people are working on them daily and developing new algorithms. All of us who have been living in Islamabad for many years know that our city is very young. It has only developed in the last few decades. So by using images, satellite images, we can also study the changing landscape, or what we call in our technical parlance as land use. What it basically means is that what kind of features exist on the Earth's surface at a specific region. So here you see four major classes. You have vegetation, water, soil, and urban area. So starting from a very initial uh, year of 1979, you see there's a lot of vegetation here, not much urban area. So you go forward, 1992, you see these sectors developing uh, after going forward by a decade. Going to 1998, the amazing thing comes when you go to 2005. I'm gonna go back and go forward. You see this immediate blow up of the urban area and this development along the Islamabad Highway. That's your DHA and Barrier Town. And when we go to 2010, suddenly you see a lot of the greenery is gone, also on the Margala Mountains. So we can use these images to study urban sprawl development and also I hope to someday manage our resources and plan where we want to develop and which natural resources we want to leave intact. I want to go now to this um, controversial thing coming to our city, the Islamabad Rawalpindi Metro. So I know you might have all your views about it, but I thought it would be really interesting to see what path we are going to follow. So this is a visual of the whole metro path. What I want to tell you, something really amazing is that this is not a simulation. The mountains you see, the features you see are generated from actual satellite data. So all these features you see, they are exactly where they're supposed to be. Oh, I think you see trail three and trail five there. There's the ground just by Margala Road. And even the Margala Mountains you've seen here, they are based, the data set you're seeing here is their original relative topography. What happens is that with satellites, we can generate a topographical map. In our language, we call it a digital elevation model, short dam. So we take this dam, and we take our flat images, which we can see from the satellites, and we overlay it or drape it over the dam. And that gives us an output where we can actually show an object on the surface of the Earth at its exact location and height position on the surface of the Earth. So the, these green markers are the stations. So we're gonna zoom through here, we're gonna pass through HEC. So these kind of visuals are very, very important in planning for, uh, you know, how you want to plan to build this thing. Also, in the case of natural disasters, if something happens to this, uh, you know, whole metro route, then this is a one visual that contains all the information. 
and you can basically see which area is blocked now, which route you need to block, which route you need to open. So that's a 360 degree view of the whole area. You can see the Margala Mountains leaving you on the left. Okay, going forward again. So it's going to get uh, more interesting as we head into Rawalpindi because we'll have much higher uh, high building density in that region. So these buildings that you're seeing, they are being cropped up as you move forward. And as we are heading into Fezabad and we'll take a turn and head towards Pindi, you'll see these buildings crop up at a high density because this is the, basically the metro route where you have these high density buildings, uh, high density tall buildings, which is not the case in Islamabad. Also for demonstration purposes, these buildings are color coded according to their function. So for example, one color might depict residential buildings, other color might depict commercial buildings. So as you can see, all the region here is looking flat, even though it is overlaid over a digital elevation model. There's not too much topography variation, so it looks completely flat. I wanna leave you with a message from a scientist which has, who has inspired me for a long time. And because I'm a professor, I can't remember these long lines, I'll have to read it out to you. So it's related with this image which you see on the slide. It was captured by a deep space probe many, many, many kilometers away from Earth. And you can see that Earth appears just as a small dot. So this is what Carl Sagan had to say about it. Look again at that dot. That's here. That's home. That's us. On it, everyone you love, everyone you know, everyone you ever heard of, every human being who ever was, lived out their lives. The aggregate of our joy and suffering, thousands of confident religions, ideologies, and economic doctrines, every hunter and forager, every hero and coward, every creator and destroyer of civilization, every king and peasant, every young couple in love, every mother and father, hopeful child, inventor and explorer, every teacher of morals, every corrupt politician, every superstar, every supreme leader, every saint and sinner in the history of our species lived there on a moat of dust suspended in a sunbeam. Thank you. <laughs>